Okay, let's talk about the seven key principles that form the foundation at Hope for Cancer. Uh, the first one is non-toxic cancer therapies. Well, the point of having uh, these therapies is to have therapies that are not going to cause additional harm, you know, n not cause an additional burden or challenge out of the body to the point of being more debilitated where then we can end up having a bigger problem. Uh, some of the therapies that we have would be intravenous, for example, uh, high dose vitamin C. We have the poly MBA, uh, Laetril, or well known as B17. Uh, therapies uh, like photodynamic therapy, which is a light-based form of therapy, sonodynamic therapy, which is more of a sound wave-based form of therapy, uh, heat therapies like the hyperthermia. Also have effect on cancer cells. Right? They also yeah. have an effect on cancer cells. Uh, other, for other therapies that we have, um, ozone therapies, ultraviolet radiation therapy, uh, PMF, which stands for Pulse Electromagnetic Field Therapy. So, you know, different kind of therapies that are focused on uh, addressing a certain mechanism that can help the body to, to uh, get to an optimal state of health mm -hmm. versus, you know, getting an additional challenge. So, Lisa, within the non-toxic uh, cancer therapies, uh, when you started them at the clinic and then you uh, segued into doing them at home, what were some of the ones that you did at home and how was the practicality of doing it at home for you? Um, the ones I did at home, I did sonophotodynamic therapy. So I took that home with me um, doing heat lamp and then the sono machine. And then I also had the photolumen laser pads that okay. I did at home. And then vitamin C, I switched to an oral form of it and kept that up at home. Okay, well let's talk about detoxification, how so important that is for us. and. It's important to detox our negative thoughts. Uh, I often say a uh, negative thought can kill you faster than a bad germ. Uh, detoxing the mouth, so all of our patients go to the biological or holistic dentist to look at metal fillings, cavitation, root canal, uh, periodontal infections and disease that's so common now. Uh, some of the studies say that 60 to 70% of the population have periodontal disease or infections that are hidden. Uh, but they are uh, tapping the immune system and creating an environment for disease to set in. Uh, another form of detoxification, of course, is the coffee enemas, which has been around for so long. It protects uh, toxins uh, and it helps eliminate the release of toxins from the liver and the gallbladder principally, and some mild cleansing of the lower colon, right? So coffee enemas are... Uh, very important and something that you took home as well. Is that mm -hmm. correct, Lisa, right. to continue yep, that's doing right. them? That's my habit. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> how was it? Was it uh, pretty cool to continue doing the coffee enemas at home? Yes, coffee enemas. And I also, um, we have a sauna, an infrared sauna. sauna. And then what we joke, jokingly call the pizza oven, okay. the hyperthermia machine. We have that. And the kids will say, Mom, are you going in the pizza oven? Mm -hmm. Yep, be out in 45 minutes. <laughs> it's just, it's what they know. So different ways of detoxing. And then uh, the third key principle, restoring the microbiome. So how important is that, Dr. Curio? Well, it's tremendously important for, for example, our immune system. You know, the assimilation of nutrients, uh, the, the kind of ecosystem or environment that we're gonna have in our, in our digestive tract. Uh, if that's not in good shape, uh, it's gonna be pretty difficult that we have optimal, optimal health. Uh, how do we do it? Well, detoxification is part of it. You know, we have to, to clean our diet to begin with. We have to have an intake of nutrients that are healthy and not, not causing irritation in the, in the digestive tract or inflammation or the accumulation of undigested food that just gets to a point of putrefication. And then we just, you know, even bacteria start forming their own parasites and, and, and things like that. So, and segueing into this also is uh, most cancer patients have subacute infections, such as Epstein Barr virus, maybe uh, cytomegalovirus, and other pathogens, parasitic infections, uh, H. pylori. So, within the restoring the microbiome, and we see how these seven key principles intermingle. We do ultraviolet blood irradiation, right, to 
get rid of some of these pathogens that are associated with the onset of cancer, maybe even with the progression. Or when a patient is stuck in getting better in their treatment, it's because maybe they have parasitic infections or viruses, uh, bacteria that is, is just dormantly uh, not visible in blood tests or scans, of course, but uh, are foundational in, in causing the progression of disease. So you started to mention the immune system and immunomodulation is another of the key principles. And uh, then you talked nutrition. Nutrition is uh, another of the key principle. Uh, how was the nutrition aspect uh, for you at the clinic and then when you went home, Lisa? I was really surprised by actually the diversity at the clinic that was allowed. I think in the beginning you get stuck on what's allowed and not allowed and it kind of puts you into a, a fearful mode about what you're gonna eat. And it was, it was beautiful, artistic, it tasted good, and it inspired our family to go home and continue that and look into more herbs that we had never used before. And it was, it was really a, a path of freedom. So you could eat healthy and it could and be delicious. Enjoy it. And you enjoy it. You could actually it. like your food. Right. And people see, see it as, Lisa, isn't that so limiting? And I think, no. <laughs> I, we use more herbs and spices than, than most families that would consider their diet to be more diverse than ours. And with respect to another hallmark or characteristic of cancer, which is hypoxia or low oxygen level, oxygenation is our other key principle. Uh, what are some of the therapies at the clinic, Dr. Curio, that we use uh, for oxygenation? Uh, well, basically we have two uh, important ones. Uh, one would be ozone therapies, which that can be administered through uh, rectal form or they can be administered through uh, blood form being combined with blood, and uh, the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, which is a form of um, increasing oxygen under a certain kind of atmosphere pressure while you're inside, so, so that oxygen molecules can be smaller and penetrate with a, with a more effective way into, into the body. We know that one of the uh, problems uh, that has been theorized about cancer cells is a low oxygen state called hypoxia. So that's one of the reasons why oxygenation will be important. Another reason is uh, one of the most important, well, all the parts of the cell are important, but one of the most uh, important would be the mitochondria, you know, and what the mitochondria needs is oxygen. If we think about the cell's uh, process of apoptosis, which is uh, when the cell knows that it needs to die in order for a new one to come, that's a process that is affected with cancer cells. So we can have uh, more proper functioning mitochondria protecting the cells that are healthy through proper oxygenation, we can have that process also to be in optimal state. So oxygenation at a cell level, tissue level, organ level, and then systemically. Brain. Brain, yes, yeah, systemically makes everything, all the therapies, uh, nutrition, everything have maximum benefit uh, yeah. in the healing process. Yes, it's, it's like when you're doing exercise, I mean, you'll have your most full potential when you're able to have the highest amount of ex oxygen uh, mm -hmm. available. I mean, you can be able to go into a state of uh, uh, anaerobic state where, where you're lacking oxygen, but that's when you start noticing you're not able to perform as to your optimal level. So if we bring that um, uh, comparison to physiology in general, our, our, our bodies are just gonna be much more healthier state. Even our immune system, which is, you know, brings us, brings us to the um, key principle of immune modulation. What could you say to us, Dr. Tony, regarding well, that? Immune modulation is, uh, that's why it's a key, one of the key uh, principles is because the immune system, the God-given immune system protects us from a cold to cancer and everything in between. So having an optimal immune system is uh, very important. But now we know even more. Now we know that it's not only about having a good immune system, it's about having an immune system that can recognize the cancer cells. Because what we know now in, in medicine and oncology is that uh, cancer cells have like a receptor site where uh, it hides or shields themselves from being seen by the immune system. 
And so now at Hope for Cancer, we have therapies like Sunivera and uh, even nutrition. Uh, Sunivera, nutrition, our soda, which is our antigen antibody uh, vaccine. And when I say vaccine, we're not talking about, you know, pathogenic uh, Mm -hmm. uh, vaccines. We're talking about uh, substances that come from your own body in the form of antigens like the PSA, CA, 125. These are antigens that we extract from the urine and then we're able to produce a, a vaccine that will give information to the antibodies so that they can detect the cancer cells more readily. So the immune system has to be in regulation or balance because having a hyperactive immune system is as bad as having a hypoactive immune system. So someone that is having treatments for cancer, we need to have a a highly regulated immune system and one that can detect the cancer cells. What what would be like fundamental things that all of us should be doing in order to prepare the terrain? You know, and that's where the seven key principles all come in because to have a good immune system, we have to lower toxic burden. Yeah. Right? With a high toxic burden, the immune system is confused. It doesn't know exactly, you know, able to detect the cancer cells. Nutrition is fundamentally important. As we know, um, in the gut, you know, that's where most of our immune defense is. So Microbiome. Microbiome, yeah. So we need to have adequate nutrient intake. And... It's hard to heal from anything, and uh, for sure cancer, if we don't have the resources and the nutrients to heal. And then we talk about also oxygenation, which you just mentioned is, is so important in, in the immune system. And then of course, a favorite topic of all of us is the emotional spiritual, right? We can see the connection of the immune system and the emotional spiritual aspect, because as we know, Dr. Korea from studies, Patients that are depressed have a, a, a low immune system, an immune system that are, is not as active. And so for you, Lisa, the emotional, spiritual was so important and something that you know you had to focus on because this was not something that you were aware of. Like, how could the emotional, spiritual help me in my, in my situation with cancer? Uh, would you like to share with us some of the, you know, features there or some of the uh, change in mindset that had to happen? There's a proverb that says a heart at peace gives life to the body. And a, a body that is not in a place of peace cannot be a place of healing. And for me to be taught when I was there at the appointments that I had with Dr. Curiel that what I think matters and to take time to surrender my fears and my control and to accept it as a change in lifestyle. And this is why I think that that's the most important of the seven principles. They all work together, but the take home for me when I left Hope for Cancer, the number one most important thing was the emotional and spiritual. Knowing that when I entered into Hope for Cancer for my three week program, It wasn't like you're gonna enter in and then all of a sudden everything, wrap it up, put a bow on it, send it home, I'm done with cancer. The emotional, spiritual component was the foundation for everything. So when I was leaving and thinking about what am I gonna do at home and what was important, I could not lose sight of the emotional, spiritual component. Getting messages, I get messages at least every few days. Somebody else was diagnosed with cancer The devastation that comes across when somebody talks to me and feels they have no options, that's the emotional spiritual. When you're sitting and listening to any human being telling you there's nothing we can do for you or this is the only option, your mind has now received that information and you're on the path to despair. But at Hope for Cancer, it was different. We learned that there could be change and to not let what you couldn't do stop you from doing what you could do. Because it's really easy, even as I'm sitting here listening to you give the seven principles and all the wonderful information. If your emotional, spiritual component is not in place, it can be overwhelming instead of helpful. But if the emotional, spiritual component is in place, you take the truth of all of the other principles and they come to life without intimidating you. 
they're tools for you. And that transitioning from being there for three weeks to being at home, knowing that what I think matters, taking time to breathe. There are times, even when you're a patient at Hope for Cancer, that the most important treatment for me was actually to go for a walk on the ocean and to reset. I think of it like a sponge and you're getting all this information and you're having all these treatments and then you get soaked and saturated and the sunshine dries you out, helps you be able to receive more. So I would go, time it in between IVs and I would literally tell the nurses, I I'm going to the beach for my treatment. I'll be back in 30 minutes. And it trained me after four weeks of that, the same thing at home. The trigger is if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel fear, if you're discouraged, that's the principle that you go back to, the emotional and the spiritual, to remember why you're doing what you did, that it was the path that you were called on. These treatments are not harming you. So don't let your emotions and your thoughts harm you either. To keep your body in a healing place is to be surrendered, at peace, and not trying to control things. All the other things are actions. Sure, take a supplement. Do your pizza oven. But being at a place of healing emotionally, that's how all of those are effective. And that's why I can wake up every day and be excited about the day because I am on a path to, to life. Well, Lisa, that was very well said. So we're living to live. Amen. Contrary to what statistics say or what you've been told, uh, what a beautiful feeling. That's how God intended us to be, to be happy, to have health, and to live a long life, right? And I know, Dr. Curiel, uh, you teach the patients some tools in emotional, spiritual well-being. Uh, just briefly, can you name a few of the tools so that uh, if you forgot them, Lisa, <laughs> <I'll remind you. laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, difficult to to generalize um, this this component uh, like a structure like like a to-do list because every person is unique first of all we need to understand that an emotion is is a problem when it becomes biological and what do I mean by that you can have certain things that will stress you out that don't have a long-term permanent effect on you okay but if there's a problem, like let's say your family is falling apart and, and that's the, the, the worst thing that can happen to you, it will create a form of stress that doesn't go away, okay? So it's not just creating emotional problems, it's creating a real life, stressful, even threatening situation that is perceived to the lowest, smallest level of your, of your biology. That's when stress is being um, directed into some organ where it actually influences how cells behave to the point that they, they can actually even mutate. Okay? So, so, it, some, so a tool for that would be, for example, positive affirmation. Well, right? it depends because if you do positive affirmation without really resolving what's behind it, that's a fairy tale you're not being realistic. You're not putting your feet on the ground. And, and that's even probably a, a trap that is very dangerous. It's very dangerous because you're, you're, you're living almost like a lie, okay? You need to become aware of what the problem is. Again, we go back to the root cause, which is the, the, the key principles addressing in, in, in from, from the physiology, the immune system, all that. You need to go to the root cause of what is the, the, the life situation that's causing you a problem to think negatively, to, to feel negatively, to have emotions that are negative, okay? Once you're able to know and understand that, then you can step into expressing yourself emotionally properly because if, if, you don't, if you're not spot on the emotions that you need to express, you may say a thousand, a million words and, and not get to the, to the words that are really important. This is like, like rocks that we carry. When we are able to put those proper words in, in, in an emotional, expressive way, you're going to feel that burden just lift off you. Once you're lighter, you're going to have a much clearer perspective of what other possibilities you have to create a change in your life that actually allows you to live 
happy, joyful, and, and, and at peace. Once you're in that point, it's easy from there. You may have problems, you may have challenges, you may have other things, but you're going to have a much um, wider wisdom to, to resolve them and without having to live under a state of inner conflict all the time. So the practical aspect of the, re of the emotional, spiritual key principle is to look for these biological conflicts, let them go, and we could do this also uh, in an active way because this work is never really done. But in addition to that prayer, meditation, positive affirmations, uh, uh, t talking, letting it out, you know, uh, are very important components of all this. Obviously, with what you're saying, Dr. Curiel, that's more, you know, work with a trained professional uh, to really get to the root cause and allow yourself to let go of these biological conflicts. Uh, but just some things to, to remember here is that these seven key principles, and I think we agree that the emotional and spiritual is, is at the hallmark, of the center of everything else in, in our healing journey. So. Lisa, thank you for uh, being here with Dr. Curiel and myself. You've been so inspirational, not only to, to myself and our staff, uh, but to other patients for embracing what you learn at the clinic and specifically for grabbing those seven key principles and making them yours. And uh, I couldn't thank you enough for that. So, and we see it in the results. And it takes more than just the three weeks at the clinic, right? The ongoing home program. So thank you so much for that. And Dr. Curiel, you know, uh, isn't it beautiful to be with uh, Lisa here? It is. Someone it is. who experienced uh, what it is I'm like. Proud, proud, feel proud of her. Real, <laughs> yeah, so thank you also for, for being here with us. Thank you, Dr. Tony and Lisa. <laughs>